Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Trucker Money. It'd be number 15 if you've been following. We got a lot of new uh, subscribers to the channel, so let me just take a second and say Trucker Money, but we talk about trucking, all things trucking, business, maintenance, stuff like that, six days a week. On that seventh day, trucking is off the table. We're going to talk about money, investments, passive income, things we're doing to earn side income outside of trucking, preparing for a life outside of trucking, preparing for retirement, all kinds of things like that. So that when we're ready to retire, maybe we can, or if things go bad in trucking, we have some multiple sources of income to hopefully get us through a little bit and provide some relief, kind of like what we just went through. That was, that was rough on a lot of people, man. I'll tell you what, it was rough on me. Uh, so... Before we get into it every week, what, what I've done to earn extra money and some different sources of income I've had, I'd like to talk about a, a different topic, maybe a little lesson or, or something. This week we're going to talk about Warren Buffett. Everybody loves Warren Buffett. Best investment of our time, they say, or best investor of our time, they say. The Oracle of Omaha, just invest like Warren Buffett and everything will be just fine, right? Well, can you invest like Warren Buffett? And should you invest like Warren Buffett? I don't disrespect Warren Buffett, but I don't worship at the altar of Warren Buffett like they like to teach us on TV because I don't think they're telling us the truth on a, on a lot of what he does. And can you even invest like Warren Buffett? Well, let's, uh, let's find out here. And to do that, let's take a look at one of Warren Buffett's recent deals, Occidental Petroleum. Last year, there was a company for sale called Anadarko. They're an oil, oil company. They were for sale. Chevron was trying to buy them. Occidental Petroleum was trying to buy them. Warren Buffett got on the side of Occidental Petroleum and said, I'll back you. I'll invest $10 billion into your company, provided that you're the winner of this deal. Well, Occidental won because Chevron backed away. Occidental won. Warren Buffett invested $10 billion into Occidental. Now let's look at that and see if that's something that me and you can do because a lot of his investments typically go this way. Warren Buffett... But when I say Warren Buffett, we're talking about Berkshire Hathaway, okay? Warren Buffett bought 100,000 shares of preferred stock for $100,000 per share with an 8% preferred dividend. Now, can you invest in preferred shares? Yes, you can. It's something not a lot of people know about. I have some have invested in preferred shares in the past. There's also ETFs and mutual funds that buy only preferred shares of companies. But can you afford a share price of $100,000 per share? Probably not. <laughs> I don't know your situation, but I'm going to say probably not. I can't. Now he's going to get an 8% preferred dividend on that, which means he's going to get paid before any common shareholders get paid. All right? So you probably can't put yourself in that situation. This will guarantee an $800 million per year dividend income off this one investment for Berkshire Hathaway. In addition to that, uh, Warren Buffett gets 80 million, uh, a warrant to buy 80 million shares of Occidental Petroleum's common shares at $62.50 per share. So he basically gets the option to buy another 80 million shares of the company at $62.50 per share. You can do that. You can buy options. If that works. Uh, not 80 million of them, obviously, of course. Now, how that works is he's guaranteed a purchase price of $62.50 if he wants to buy it. So if the share price goes to zero, obviously he's not going to exercise this option to buy the shares at $62.50. He'd be losing a ton of money. But if the share price went to $100 per share, just with some quick math of a gain of $40 per share, uh, that would be a $3.2 billion, $3 billion gain for Warren Buffett. If they went higher than that, it's higher. So if the share price goes down, he loses nothing. He didn't buy the shares. If the share price goes up, it's almost like going in back in time and buying those shares at $62.50, but instantly they're worth $100. We can kind of do that. Uh, not to that dollar amount tune. So this is what the media doesn't tell you. They tell you, oh, Warren Buffett just bought $10 billion of Occidental Petroleum shares. Well, not common shares. And also a lot of times with that, 
on a lot of deals. Warren, Warren Buffett will provide uh, loan guarantees to the company where he will back their loans or he will just straight up provide them a loan in uh, exchange for whatever he dictates he wants. Okay, With the amount of money that Warren Buffett he wants, he can bully these companies into whatever, just about whatever the heck he wants. We can't do that. So when they talk about Warren Buffett earned 30% return per year for 10 years off of XYZ investment, that's an, a whole as of all these things. That means the, the preferred stock, the common stock options, and maybe even some loans. That's the truth of it. Not that he, he was so smart to pick this stock at $20 a share and it went to 200. That's not, that's not an honest assessment, but that's kind of what they lead you to believe. In the, in the situation. So we can't back, we can't provide them loan guarantees and we can't uh, bully our way into an 8% preferred dividend. Now the thing about that is when Warren Buffett invests in a company, it's not always a good deal for the company. And a lot of times it's not. And this is an example of that. This deal put Occidental Petroleum in a precarious situation financially. And then they got hit by the oil problems we're having now on top of it. And they have had to cut their common share dividends by 50%. Or maybe even more by now. The last, the last I checked, they cut them by that much, but it's probably more by now. I haven't looked at this deal in, in quite a while. So people like me and you would get stripped of their dividend, but Warren Buffett still gets that 8% 8% preferred. If they hadn't been paying him that, they'd probably have the money to pay the common shareholders. But preferred shareholders get paid first. And with preferred stock, it kind of works almost like a bond where you get preferential payment. You're, you're first in line to get paid as far as shareholders goes, but you don't really get in a lot of appreciation in share price. So that's, that's more of how a Warren Buffett deal goes. It's not just he's a brilliant investor to pick things at their bottom and, and sell them at the top. It's just not an honest assessment. So right there you see that you can't necessarily invest like Warren Buffett, but what you can do is follow Warren Buffett's principles as far as uh, valuing a company, uh, buying companies that only pay a dividend. Now that's ironic too. Warren Buffett will typically only buy a company that pays a dividend, but Berkshire Hathaway shares do not pay it. He, he, he'll earn a dividend, but he won't pay a dividend. And so he just keeps rolling it into the share price. Berkshire Hathaway class A shares are over $300,000 a share. So a person like me and you, uh, Typically, we can't just go buy some shares of Berkshire Hathaway unless we do it inside of a mutual fund or an ETF or something. There are Class B shares, but they're still over $2,000 a share. So I don't know why the problem of he's, he's a big fan of dividends, but he won't pay one. Now, that's kind of a synopsis of, of, of the Warren Buffett thing. I, I respect the man. I think he's a great investor, but there's other people out there that are smart too. Jim Simmons. Uh, you can follow Peter Lynch. I say all this to, to caution you in picking a guru, okay? Just thinking that Buffett is the most brilliant man and you should just go put all your money, you know, follow him and do what he does because you can't, okay? You don't have enough money to bully companies into giving you these deals. So let's dive into the week of August 12th through the 21st and what, what happened here? What did I earn as far as side income or, or investment income? And talk about that a little bit. Well, as far as... Uh, Sources other than trucking earned uh, about $20 from YouTube, which is a, a nice little, little $20 bill. It's definitely uh, not much for the time that goes into this. Anybody who, who does YouTube knows how much time and effort it takes in here, and we're just kind of getting started. Uh, so that was kind of nice. And then a $10 credit on the Mudflap app. If you haven't seen that video, go back and watch it. Maybe you can save some additional money on fuel. Now, by now you've probably figured that we're going to talk about dividends here next, and, and I'm a, definitely a, a, a dividend investor. We had a dividend cut this week, but if you've been watching, we kind of knew this one was coming. It's BP. They cut their dividend 50%. I'm actually kind of surprised they didn't go more than that. It was This was the right thing to do. They should have cut it. They probably should have cut it a while ago, but they're trying to hang on uh, because cutting a dividend kind of kind of puts shareholder confidence on shaky ground. They cut it by 50%. I'm not going to sell. I'm, gonna, I'm keeping that investment because I'm in this for decades, not days. I'm a long-term investor. I have a long-term time horizon. 
and I believe over the course of time, this will straighten itself out. The only other dividend cut we got was a few months ago in the middle of this pandemic, uh, Royal Dutch had cut theirs also. Oil has just been getting annihilated. Now, this is a prime example of why I hold so many different positions. I go back and forth on that. Should I have 49 different stocks? Probably not. But when a thing like this happens, it restores my faith of, all right, so BP cut their dividend now. But if you've been watching over the last 15 weeks, I've had multiple other companies raise their dividend. So it mediates that risk of getting a dividend cut. When one thing gets taken out, you still have many other positions still paying you and some of them even increasing their dividends. So I like that. And uh, it encourages me to, to keep going with that strategy and building multiple sources here uh, to kind of mediate a little bit of risk. Now, who paid this week? Well, People's United Bank, ticker symbol PBCT paid. They have a current yield of 6.85%. Procter & Gamble paid current yield of 2.31% and Starbucks paid at 2.12%. What did I buy this week? I picked up some additional shares of Duke Energy at 4.76% and Pepsi at 2.99%. Now something that kind of came to my mind here is uh, you probably noticed different dividend yields here over the course of time. Some are up in that high 6% range, some are down in lower 2% range. And I just want to talk about that for a minute. Some people might think, well, why would you mess with these ones that only pay a 2% dividend? Well, over the, generally, companies like that over the course of time raise their dividend aggressively, which is what I'm after because if you understand compounding, you'll know what that'll do over the course of time. These ones that have a higher starting yield generally don't increase it as much every year. Take like Duke Energy, starting yield right now. If you were to buy it sometime today, it'd be right around 4.76% starting yield. But they only increase their dividend about 2% a year. In a direct contrast to that, well, that would provide you with some current income now, if you needed the income now. Direct contrast to that would be Pepsi, starting yield at 2.99%. But they raise their dividend aggressively. Uh, I think their compound annual growth rate is 8.5% for the last five years. That's a big thing over the course of time. If you have time on your side, you won't make as much now, but uh, over the course of time, that compounding really matters. Oh, incidentally, this is not advice. This is just theoretical what could happen to inspire and motivate you to kind of invest and take, our, take charge of your own finance. I don't do an, uh, advice here. I just tell you what I'm doing in my own personal life. So that being said, I kind of look, took a look at that portfolio as a whole. And my current average yield for the portfolio as a whole is 3.85%, which is right where I want to be. Three and a half ish, 3.75%, right around there. Uh, that provides me with some current income, which I don't take the income. Uh, I know I talk about, you know, income now. I reinvest it because I don't need it. I'm doing this for later. Uh, so it gives you a little, it's right in that range where you get a little bit of current income, plus you're not sacrificing that, that growth over time. It may seem a little low, but that's where I want to be in, in my position. I'm 44 years old. I got a long ways to go for retirement. If you're up in the, you know, the 60s, you know, ish, Maybe you'd want a little bit more current yield and, and not look for that growth over so much time. But if you're younger, like 20, oh my gosh. They often say, if I had to do it all over again, I've been investing a long time, but I never really took it serious until maybe five years ago. I always just kind of dabbled. I've always been in real estate, but I'm just talking stocks here now. Oh, man, if I could go back to 20 years old, with the knowledge I have now, I just... It makes me cringe to think of what, what could have been. So if you're young, please get, get started in something. Time, time beats money in, in investing every time. Time is the most important thing. Not to say that if you're older, you can't do this. You certainly can. You certainly can. It's just going to take a little bit, little bit more money to, to uh, get where you want to go. And generally, if you're in your late 40s, 50s, you're in your prime earning time of your life. So generally, you would, you would have the money. Don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged in anything you want to do. 
anything is possible, just, just get out there and do it. This is kind of what this channel is all about, doing stuff. We don't sit around with the drama and talking about things. I got no time for drama. Uh, not that it's not entertaining for some people and that. Just don't do that here. And, and I hope nobody ever brings drama to this channel. We're, too, we're busy, man. We're busy building an empire. And I hope you decide to join me for that and uh, build something. So let's continue to do that. Join me every week and uh, keep on trucking.